Well, I get asked a surprising amount of times how I set my seat box up and what attachments and bits and bobs I use. So I'll just spend 10 minutes just going through, showing you what I use and why, and uh, hopefully it'll give you a few pointers for your own setups. As far as the seat box itself goes, I use an XR36 Pro and uh, 36 mil legs, extra stability, and they're absolutely brilliant. They never like these 36 mil boxes, but once they're set up, they're super, super stable. So um, I do have a smaller box for my roving sessions and my commando missions. I might be able to go through that on, a, on another video. But this is my main box for when I'm fishing a match and um, for, I don't know, three, four, five, six hours. So, um, right, let's have a look at the attachments. Firstly, I have two of these side trays. These are self-supporting side trays, and I've got two, one at the front, one at the back, and I drop the back one lower. And basically, all my bits and bobs go on the back tray, and all my bait goes on the front tray. Um, maybe a few pots and a whole bunch of pots and stuff on the front tray. Um, and before I put that back on, uh, a lot of people ask about this. Now this is just a bait umbrella arm with a medium length extension, leg extender, and then it's an under and over pole support for balling in. But these are balling in arms really, or an under armor, or under and over pole support. I drop it down a little bit lower. Um, my GoPro goes on there. <laughs> um, but that's like an outrigger arm, and my landing net sits snugly in there. And that keeps my landing net exactly where I want it every time, and uh, the wind can't blow it away and everything like that. Now I always have my side tray, level with my seat as well. I don't want to be bending down or reaching far for um, bait tubs or catapults or whatever. So keep it on the level so you, and whatever bait you're using, put nearest to you. I can't understand why people just stretch over for, for baits and things or stretch down and then wonder why they've got a bad back and stuff. So keep it all nice and high, as high as it will go, level. And then all the bits and bobs that are out the way, they go there. And, um, and the Milan net sits in there snugly. Um, my other, um, this is the GoPro that I'm looking at that I'd normally have, but it'll go on there and that just sits on, on there. It's a nice distance with the wide angle uh, facility so I can, uh, I can still reach it and press start and stuff and stuff whilst I'm fishing. So that goes on there as well. If we just take this back off, there's one other thing I'll show you. And that's, uh, that's my watch. <laughs> and this stays permanently on my box, but that is just, just, uh, just a bracket and a cheap a cheap waterproof watch that stays on there. Um, I don't use um, stop watches and things like some people. I just use a digital watch and um, and I can keep an eye on the time and also how long my feed has been in the swim for and things like that. So that stays on there permanently. And I can put it up nicely there so it's out the way. And then this and that just stays on my box permanently. I can look down and I can see it. I could pull it on that leg if I wanted as well, but generally I find it's just out the way here at the moment. So I'm happy with that. That goes in there. And I do like these, these side trays. They do a bigger version, but I don't need bait up to here. And these fit nicely on my barrow and, in, and just they're just nice and convenient. So uh, obviously you don't always have to have this back tray. Sometimes everything just goes on the one tray. So that's all my bits and bobs there. Um, if we spin round, I'll show you some other bits. Well, next up is my keep nets. Um, I use a keep net bar if I'm on a commercial fishery or anywhere I need multiple keep nets. And um, a little tip is I always bring it quite high up, higher than a lot of people. And that's because I've seen so many uh, fish jump out of keep nets. So keep it quite high if you can. And I also turn the blocks upwards, if you can see that. So everything's up higher and that brings the keep net nearer to you. Um, as they come, they're 90 degrees facing that way, but that pushes everything too far out. So turn them 90 degrees towards you and then your keep net will get flusher to the bar. Everything will be a bit nearer and it will be a bit higher again to stop this jumping out. Um, these are telescopic, <laughs> those I haven't seen. So I, once I've got three or four nets in, that, that one can go right up there out the way. Same on the other side. And, um, and these blocks are movable so I can move it in the middle or whatever to suit. Now if I'm not fishing somewhere prolific or so if it's a winter match or where I only need one keep net then uh, the bar comes off because it's a heavy, heavy bit of equipment that so it doesn't have to uh, um, 
if I don't need it, I don't bring it because it's a heavy bit of equipment. And then if I do want to uh, just use one keep net, that's the attachment I use. And that'll just centralise my keep net. This goes on the one leg, keeps it nice and central. So you can see that. It's worth also saying that if I've got um, just a match with just two keep nets, I just bring two of these. So uh, one's got Dupont, one hasn't, but just two of those, nice and light, and I can just pop them on the front legs like that. So they just, uh, one goes there, out the way, and the other one probably in front of me there. So that's what I do if I've got two, two keep nets this time of year, a lot, lot lighter than a keep net bar. And then the keep net, thing worth pointing out, I use the, the keep net block there. And because I never ever use this thread, I've actually chopped it off. I've actually hacksawed it off. Ben Townsend showed me that. It's dead right to do it. If you don't use that one, just chop it off because you're that way, then your landing net and things don't get stuck in it. So that's nice and smooth and nothing can catch it. But only if you're definitely going to just use this bottom one. These keep nets have a thread there and a thread on the side. So I just use the, uh, the other one. And then I like to use these two and a half meter keep nets, little compact nets. And I've always got a bit of bungee on the end as well. You can see that? A little bit of a um, old pole elastic. And that'll go in. And I always put it in nicely. It clicks. And then that, I'll make sure, as long as the bank and everything allows you to, I've got a little uh, tent peg or umbrella spike peg and that'll go in there and I'll generally bring it around around my pallet and that as long as make sure it's all submerged but that'll protect your pallet that'll help stop fish going under your pallet and in through your legs and things and also keeps the keep net out the way if you do want to catch here or net fish here you know where your keep net is and once a few fish are in your keep net your keep net also start swimming around and everything and um, I don't want to be hooking my keep net so uh, where I know where it is I'm less likely to hook it so that's how I have it so one central keep net if I'm just on like a silverfish venue um, I'll have one left and right with a little bit of a gap between the two if I'm on a commercial if I need three nets or four nets then obviously I'll, I'll put them to suit but I like to have a little gap if I can for filling my pole pot and that way um, I know I'm not going to snag my keep nets when I do it so that's how I have those and then um, this stays on my box all the time even in transit that's my uh, little pole sock mini pole sock I've just put a bit it's the same attachment as this but I just I just put a bit of tape around it just to make it a bit more padded I don't want things banging and tinny, tinny noises and stuff when I'm fishing so I've just put a bit of um, pipe lagging and tape around that and that just goes nicely high nice and high there some people have it on the middle leg but I definitely prefer it on the uh, front leg if I can. And then, um, and that's me pole setup really. The only other thing I have is another um, um, bait umbrella arm. I used to use my extending feeder arm for this, but this bait umbrella arm's perfect. Another, um, another leg or uh, extending leg extension. And then the, uh, the pole roost goes there. And that'll go on the middle leg or usually the back leg will go on there and all my top kits and rods will go off to my right I see a lot of people there you have um, different sorts of roots and roots and things going off to the left but I, if I can I have it off to the right I always have done and my pole will go there and my top kits over the top that's that's out the way for me but I know a lot of people have the under and over type pole pole supports and things and they have them off to the left generally but for me that's just not in the way my landing net's not going to hit it or anything so uh, that's how I like it I don't tend to have another support at the back unless I'm wading out in the river or uh, on, a, on a big still water or whatever just one's fine for me I just find it faster for picking up and selecting my top kits and having it like that the only other thing to show you now is my feeder attachments as well uh, this is my uh, rear feeder support if I'm cart fishing or whatever and I don't want my rod pulled in, then that's what I use. And if I need both hands free, then I always use a butt support. Um, I used to have it off on the middle leg, but actually I, these days I have it on the front leg. And uh, I find that much better to have it on the front leg. Um, I used to find when you cast to an island and hit the clip, a lot of people will bring the rod back to put it on the back rest. But by hitting the clip, you actually go forward so you actually gain a, a turn or two on the reel by having it there 
So, uh, and I just find that useful. Um, I can spin it off out the way near my pole sock as well. That's so it's out the way if I'm not using it as well. But that's nice. That's uh, that's how I generally have it off my front leg now. It also means I can get on and off my box without having having it here in the way. And incidentally, because I don't do anything with these two legs, I've chopped them down. They they were up to here, but they just get in the way. So I've chopped them down three or four inches because I don't need those legs where they are um, up to here. They just get in the way. So, uh, but anyway, so I've got that one there. And then um, this is the short feeder arm. And uh, generally I angle it down one notch. And it's absolutely brilliant this. I used to have my pole support, uh, my pole roofs off, off one of these as well, but I, I just have this fixed arm now. But that's brilliant. And. Uh, I can have it wherever I want it. And then this style of uh, feeder, rust, feeder rest is um, what I generally prefer for commercials. If I'm bream fishing, skimmer fishing, I'll have a longer rest generally. And then that will go off on this leg. Generally pointing downwards on venues like this that are quite high. I can have a 10 or 11 foot rod on there, no problem. Absolutely perfect. 95% of the time, I'll have it on the left leg. So, uh, and the other thing I do, I just loosen it off a bit as well. If I am netting fish, just kick it out the way. I don't like netting fish with a feeder arm in the way. Just, I just knock it out the way whilst I'm playing the fish, or I'll bring it that way, so it's just out the way. Um, nice little tip for me. I, some, I always try and do is just, just kick it out the way when you're trying to net a fish, and then just put it back there again when you need it. So simple to do. So that's it, that's my feeder arm. And that folds up, and that goes in my, uh, in my accessory bag. But this, if I am going to a feeder venue, then that will stay on the back leg or middle leg. Same as this one. That will stay on the box as well. If I can leave as much stuff on my box as possible, I will. There's one less thing to, to have to forget or try and find in your bag. So that's it. Hopefully that's given you a few pointers in how to set your own seat box and uh, all your accessories up. I try and keep it as simple as possible and just get into a nice routine of setting up the same way and then you get faster and faster for setting up. I'm still terrible at setting up. I'm still very, very slow at setting up, but at least I know where everything goes and I've tried to get it as dead right as possible. So hopefully that's given you a few pointers. I'll see you again on the bank.